All right, so I want to go over this problem, and this problem is one of the reasons I feel that the 12A cutoff for the Amy is going to be quite high. Um, this problem felt easier to me than anything from the AMC 10 from about 15 to 25, maybe even from like 13 to 25. If you're an AMC 12 student, this is really low level trig knowledge. I mean, stuff that we should all know. And so when I was, it's another thing that I do too, and I want to recommend this to all of you as well. Sometimes don't solve problems with paper. Try and do it, you can just like have it on your phone and just look at it in your room, you're going to sleep at night, solve a couple problems mentally if you can. I ended up solving this problem and number 22 both mentally. And it forces you to think about it in a different way to find shortcuts. You can practice on AMC8, you can practice on any kind of old content you want. No, I can't do every problem mentally, but I try. I try to see as far as I can get mentally before I pick up the piece of paper or when I, you know, am not so lazy and actually, you know, get out of bed and do it. But I solved this earlier today in this way, and this is how I thought of it. Let X be the least real number greater than one such that sine of X equals sine of X squared where the arguments, that's the inside parts, are in degrees. What is x rounded up to the closest integer? Well, first, look at your x values. You've got between 10 and 20. Where are these located in degrees? They're located in the first quadrant, right? You can see this in your mind, just random, okay? You're somewhere here, okay, right? Call this theta. Well, do we not know a all scholars take calculus? And your school probably says students, but I ask, would you rather be a student or a scholar? That's what I thought. Okay, so uh, all scholars take calculus tells us that in the second quadrant, that sine is positive. There's other ways to know sine is positive. Sine is associated with y, and then the first two quadrants, y is a positive value and so on. But these are equal. So if I have like, you know, sine of 30, it's equal to sine of 150. This should be common knowledge. If you're taking an AMC 12 and you're getting to number 19 and this is something, I hope you didn't forget it maybe, you might be so far advanced that this has been so long ago you forgot about it, but this should be something like knowing your times tables as far as trig goes, okay? So then when you think about that, uh, you could, if you wanted to, you could say, all right, x plus x squared equals 180. And I thought about that and you try and move it over and factor, but why? We're not even going to get an exact value anyway. We want x rounded up. Let's just toss this 10 in there. 110, not close yet. Let's try 13. 13 plus 169, 182. That's a little bit too big, but 12, where's 12 at? Uh, 144 and 12, 156. So somewhere between 12 and 13 on the degree marker, you're gonna pass over 180. And there is no 11 even here or 12 here as an answer. So it says rounded up to the closest integer. Even that, yeah, it's 13. Really trivial problem. I don't see uh, this the, the, the cutoff being any lower than a 93. I gave my range on my prediction of this of 93 to 100.5. It used to be that it was very common to have a 100.5 cutoff on the AMC 12. It's only been in the last four years that it hasn't usually gotten that high, uh, but I think this could easily get there. Yeah, sorry for you guys who are on the border there. If you're as low as 93 or above, I think you have a shot. And we could all be surprised, right? This is a hard game to play because there's no exact percent cutoff anymore. It's they, they figure it out based on whatever numbers they're looking at internally that we don't have access to and their objectives and stuff like that. But if I had to guess between 93 and 100.5, I would say that 100.5 is probably twice as likely as 93. So I, I think there's, if you're gonna hedge, it's probably gonna hedge that way, hedge higher on it. But we could be shocked. I, again, I'm not Nostradamus or anything like that. So if they end up having a lower cutoff than 93, maybe you get in. But if you're below that, I would probably bank on trying to get do better on the B. In fact, if you have anything less than 100.5, I would just take the assumption that you probably didn't qualify. And even though you might have, but just assume you didn't and focus on the B and get the job done. All right, so I'm gonna do another one now in a moment that I'll also film tonight, where I will again, I did it mentally and I'll explain to you how I did it and we'll be right back with that one. 